If you're like most Christians, this message probably isn't for you. You see, most Christians don't have a problem taking a stand on some issue or some point of view that they see as a priority and sometimes will go out of their way to create a controversy and then they want to fight for the right to be persecuted perhaps or to stand on some more or moral or principle that they think is right rather than let sometimes people do what is wrong so that God can work out in their life what he wants to. The majority of the time that's what most Christians do because they feel as though they need to fix what's wrong with someone rather than let God make what is right with someone the priority. For me, there's always a fine balance is that sometimes you have the opportunity like a gardener to watch things grow and you just kind of you just watch the plant bloom and blossom and you get a chance to participate in it and you know move it around and see how it does in different settings or to prune it you know and to repot it sometimes but God is the master gardener you know he has everything planted for a purpose and a design and sometimes people get in the way of that design so you have to be very careful when you take a stand recently I found myself in a no compromise situation that it would be easy in my life to take a stand on lots of issues because I do know what the scripture says. I mean, it's very, it doesn't take a genius to figure it out after a while. I mean, to put it bluntly, you can read it, the Bible, and you can find some things that are pretty factually laid out that are true that when people argue about it and debate, it's usually, and you can figure this one out too, it's usually because they're trying to get away with something, you know, because they don't like to do something that God said they shouldn't be doing. Or they do like to do something God says they shouldn't be doing. So if you're honest about it, you know, you know the times where it's theological or it's dogmatic or it's religious or that it's actually something that maybe you should pay attention to do because Jesus said it. So I found myself recently on child issues, you know, really bugged. You know, I, I saw this whole onslaught of nothing but posting all these kids being shoved up in the limelight, being told, oh, you're a rock star, oh, you're a movie star, oh, you're the next American Idol, oh, isn't it so cute seeing my little child that, you know, I've trained them and I've taught them and they look like a puppy, you know, that I can pull the strings and set them up on stage, you know, and they can perform for everyone, you know, and now I've got my camera and my video, you know, so I can go ahead and post it on the internet and they can go viral and we can become famous and they can make lots of money and then that could be their ministry unto God. When I saw the onslaught recently of a whole bunch of child videos, you know, I remembered how often I'd seen rock stars, Christian worship leaders behind the scenes and what they did in order to prepare to go out on stage, how sometimes in their sound checks and setups, they weren't the most Christian-like of people. I remember, as a matter of fact, at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa on Friday nights, how most Christians weren't the most Christian of people when they were lining up to get in the door for a free concert. As a matter of fact, you could tell all the carnal Christians because they would go running in and dive over pews and throw Bibles down and push and shove and knock each other down and just didn't seem to be you know, quite the godly people that we were supposed to be. So in the back of my mind, I always knew that, you know, every spiritual Christian has the opportunity to act stupid at some point in time. But you know, there was a song that Phil Keggy wrote and Randy Stonehill that said, Who will speak up for the children, helpless and half abandoned? I, they've got a right to choose life they don't want to lose. I've got to speak up, won't you? And it was basically an abortion song, and it was beautiful, but it touched my heart in such a way that I always remembered it. It was powerful. It had a great effect on my, my inner being, my soul, my spirit. And God brought that song hauntingly to me when I was looking at this video on the, on the internet and I thought, oh my God, what are we doing with these children? 
you know? Are these like being sacrificed to the god Baal? You know, are we being Molochized by putting our children up in front of all these child molesters and people that want to use these videos and friend them and, you know, link to them and put them out on the internet so that they could be seen by everyone? Where and what happened to the innocence of the children? What happened to the childlike beauty that we used to look at a little child with their face so innocent and say, Oh, such is the kingdom of God. And I was grieved in my heart. I was blown away in my spirit that it bugged me so much because I don't have children. I have nieces and nephews, you know, and that, but I don't have my own children for my own loins. And God said, you know, that the he who does not have children has more than those that do have children. Meaning that sometimes, you know, you have more children because you don't have them from direct birth than you have from real birth. And so I was moved with compassion to the point of thinking, oh no. And then I saw, you know, like the Jeanet, Jean Benet Ramses, you know, those children that are like being paraded on stage for for the ultimate prize of winning some beauty pageant and making children become beauty pageants. Then I saw all these child stars, you know, oh, they're being forced into sports so that they could get a good education, so that they could get out of their impoverished, impoverished setting, because after all, you know, that's the way to get out of, you know, the inner city was to become, you know, the next basketball star, the next football star, the next, what was it? Oh, yeah, we're getting them out of the inner city. And then I saw the news stories with some of the college university coaches who were molesting children that had started these inner city projects to rescue kids and then the kids that were being rescued were molested and I was disgusted and then God showed me and he says how dare you look at the child molester and you don't look at your own house put your own house in order let me show you where I am and so God took me on a journey, as it were, to look at all the children's videos that are on the internet. All these wonderful little saints that are preaching the word of God. Oh, he's a miracle, all right. He's got the suit on, he's got the tie on, and he's preaching hellfire and brimstone. And I was disgusted by what I saw. He wasn't a preacher. He was a puppet. He'd been created in the image of his parents. He'd been created in the image of Jimmy Swagger or Billy Graham. He'd been created not in the image of God Almighty himself. And I was grieved again. And I went, God, no. And it hurt me. And then I looked and I saw, God says, look at this. And I saw, as it were, another child thrown up on the video stage. Oh, they sing like angels. And you could see the format and how they had been trained to warble at the right time to speak and sing like a Whitney Houston and do the in their voice to use the intonations, to use the mannerisms of adults. And Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And I looked at these children that were in the ministry. Oh, yeah, innocently done, of course. And then I remembered the 2020 special and ABC and CBS and NBC when they had thrown up, oh, this child's been to heaven. The parents are even shocked. This child has seen God. And they interviewed the child and the child said, well, you know, I remember it this way and, you know, kind of like it wasn't quite so big. And it was like the child was trying to go back to being childlike. And the parents were saying, no, he'd been to heaven. Look, ask him again. And so they asked him and the child kind of changed the story and said, yeah, you know, I did this and I did that. And, you could tell it wasn't real. And I was grieved again, and I thought, Lord, what are we doing to the children? And then I saw the generation of warriors that Satan had raised up for the Battle of Armageddon. Oh, look, the children are rebelling against their parents. They're not doing what their parents say, because they have no parents. They have no father. The fathers are gone. Where did the father go? He abandoned his child. Where did the mother go? The mother killed children for the sake of sending them to heaven. My God, what are we doing to the children? And I was moved with compassion because that was a line of defense. The woman said she killed her children so that they could go to be with Jesus because, after all, children are born innocent. 
They're not born in sin. They get to go on a free trip to heaven if they die before the age of accountability. And I just mourned for the fact that that child was in hell. And I know somebody will argue with me about the age of innocence that they can't find in the Bible. And say, oh, but David said he'd go see them. And they deceive themselves, believing a lie. So, God and I talked, and I, I, I was grieved, and I said, but Lord, they have children, and I don't. Who am I that I should criticize, or critique, or even be mindful of those who have an experience I myself do not have? And God gave me the scripture, as usual, of the, he that hath no children hath more than he that does have children. And I was... Kind of like, well, Lord, yeah, I know that one. You, know, you don't have to remind me of that one. <laughs> Whenever I'm trying to get away from the Lord, you know, he gives me all the scriptures I don't want to hear. So I thought, as I watched more and more being posted on the Internet, and even people starting to paste them on my page that I'm trying to share Jesus on, I thought, God, I've got to speak up. I've got to say something. What do you want me to say? So I wrote down my little zero tolerance that I can't tolerate this you know I saw on another program where they had set people up on the internet you know that people were cruising on the internet they were they were trolling for pornography and people that would go after children you know to have sex with them and they would show up and then they'd get busted by 2020 or by whatever program it was and I thought and we dare as Christians to portray our children on the internet and flash their picture all over for the world to see? Didn't Jesus say, don't promote yourself? Don't make yourself so famous and well-known that everybody looks to you and says, oh, look at you. And they don't look to Jesus. So as I reviewed that, I thought, God, what would you do? Why isn't your childhood in the Gospels? Oh, but he went to temple, you know, and he, he spoke with the sages there. What year? And how many, how many times? Once it's recorded. So, I saw these rock stars, you know, children, doing the things that adults do. And I said, well, this is vicarious. This is how... Parents live through what they couldn't do for themselves, but they want to live through their children. And I knew that that was a big problem in a lot of parents' lives, you know, is that they don't let the children, you know, they don't train up a child in the way that they should go and then, you know, direct them and give them all the tools and opportunities so that God could use them from that moment on. They don't turn their children over to God and say, thank you for allowing me the privilege of raising up a child up to a certain point and then giving them to you, God, to freely use as you choose, for they are your children, and such is the kingdom of God. And you want that child to be a child of God more than you want them to be created after the image that I have for them or after the image of the world. And I thought, wow, imagine that. Imagine if God adopted these children that the parents have abused. What would the world be like? So I took a stand and I said, no, as I often do when something is just wrong. And people get upset when I say no. I post the first word out of my mouth is no. I personally will not promote this video. I personally will not say this is the right thing to do. I personally, for myself, have to take a zero tolerance and say, no, I will not allow this video, this post, or this child to be abused and exploited by anyone because it's out there for everyone to exploit and use for their own purpose. I will not sell these children's image, much less the children themselves by way of a spiritual fornication to the world and market them on the internet in some way that they have no control over once they posted and pasted it on the internet for anyone to use the way they want to use them or abuse them. And I said, no, I would God that the heavens rejoice that 
A parent see their child at church rejoicing in the fact that they went up to share a song and kept it there for those that were there, for such is the kingdom of God. Or they rejoice in their own family unit with their friends when they video and share with their friends and neighbors within their little circle. But to throw it out there to the world on the marketplace and stage and say, here, take this video and abuse it as though it were my child. Commit vicarious fornication. Or we could say spiritual fornication with it by making into something the people that started with in their own mind never intended it to wind up. If I know that I know that I know in my heart that something's going to be abused, how dare I leave it there and let it happen? Am I my brother's keeper? And yet the man who asked that was the one who killed his brother. So when I took a stand, I prayed about it and I posted it and pasted it. And whenever I see a child video, you'll see my post right afterwards. It'll say something about, for me, and it always says for me, about, I have to take a zero tolerance because I can't stand it. I can't think in my mind the fact that I was blind or that I was deaf when I wasn't. That I didn't look when I could have seen. That I didn't hear when I should have heard. That I didn't know in my heart because I hadn't searched the scriptures. I didn't already know the answer. And I participate in it by letting it go past me because the Holy Spirit brings it to the forefront of my mind and my eyes. And I see it right there as darkness. I said, I will paste it, Lord. And boy, wow. The first time I did. Oh, there is a compliment. But such hostility and anger coming back at me. I was not surprised, but I was amazed about all the excuses that people offer when they think they're right. And they might be wrong. So I took my stand and I prayed and I said, Lord, you have to be the one to judge because I can't do anything except that I judge myself and say, Am I too far? Have I gone too far? Am I not still loving? Am I not still caring? Do I care about the children more than I care about the parents? Or do I care about the parents and the children? Do I give it back to you? And so I examine my writings constantly. I pray about it. I go before the Lord and I say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And in this case, the Lord said, do as you have done. And so, since I started this mini crusade, so to speak, silently because no one really sees it that often and most people, they just ignore what I have to say about it. Spiritually, man, all hell is broken loose. It's like Satan has come after me and God warned me in my devotionals. Look, you know, this is going to happen. This is, this is what I want you to do, but you will, you will be persecuted because in the world you shall have tribulation, but be a good cheer of overcome the world. But Likewise, when you bring light into a dark subject or you bring something to the forefront of people's attention that they've been getting away with because they are saved by grace and they have a freedom to do anything they want to do. They really are. There is an accountability at the end of the world, but not before then. Well, you reap what you sow, so there really is accountability, but people like to try to say there's not. So, I said, but Lord... I won't make the child exploitation the issue, but I will point towards the realization that you are the one we should always focus in on and what you tell a person to do, that they should do. So in all the ministry things that I've ever done and even the stands that I take, I always point to Jesus because you can do what you want to do. God has given you the grace and the mercy to be forgiven, to be equipped, to be inspired, to be led, to be chosen, to be hearing his voice, to know what his will is, to decide for yourself, for your child, for your family, what God wants for them. But also, you need to realize that God also will hold you, old man, you, woman, accountable for the fruit of your loins that you either neglected, objected to, participated in in some way, 
helped co-create with God a child born into this world that you are responsible for and accountable to God for the realization of Jesus in their life. Enjoy liberty. Blessed is the man who's patient under trial and stands up under temptation. For when he has stood the test and been approved, he will receive a crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. Life is miserable when we won't listen to anybody else or when we get mad at everything. Somebody doesn't agree with us. To be so emotionally ruled and controlled that we are stressed every time something doesn't go our way is bondage. When Jesus sets us free, it means that we are free not to get upset just because we don't get everything we want. It is wonderful to be free. We can give thanks for the liberty to receive God's help and walk in patience despite our circumstances. Our lives can be happy, blessed, and peaceful. We can experience joy no matter what the situation may be. And the reality for me was that after so much hostility, I chose to say to people now, I'll still post everything that I do as far as standing up for children. I never take issue with all these other things that people get carried away about, like politics or, you know, just because they think that, you know, God didn't appoint the president, but they think they voted him in, that they can go ahead and make fun of or tear down the authorities God has put in charge. Then I... I just smile and walk away from those things and I've decided that, you know, in these latter days that as the world will come to an end and one of the things God will be their strong tower and refuge in is the little children, even to the challenging of the parents. That for me, I have to at least post on the video what I see and then walk away and let you or whoever you are that thinks children in ministry is a good thing or children doing these adult things is right or children created in your image and imagination is the freedom you have to do with the child what you want to do once I have shared my piece about how it bothers me like dust on the wind I shake off sometimes the dirt from my feet and I simply pray for that person and say God help them and I walk away and sadly at times that even means I put them far from me so that I don't have to see these things that are evil in the sight of God that men do we live in a evil generation and sometimes it affects you. So be careful what you put your eyes upon or you cause someone else to see. But we need to encourage one another and exhort one another even more so as we see that the days are evil and wickedness abounds. I have a joy every morning. But my sorrow is that sometimes, sometimes, People choose to do the wrong thing over the right.